All right, we got this thing crackalacking tonight on this Thursday. So are we live? Let me see. <laughs> Honey, are we live? Yes, we are. Oh, right, are we live? <laughs> Oh, you guys see what I deal with every day. Uh, mm -hmm. This is my tour partner, my husband, uh, Mr. T, Terio Davis. And we are coming to you guys tonight for a very special interview to talk about none other than working as a married uh, tour team. As always, this is a pop-up interview, so uh, feel free to chime in, provide us with your comments in the feed. Ask any questions, uh, Terio has already said. Yes, this is going to be R-rated. I'm going to get into <laughs> the blunt, honest truth. Um, if any agency out there, um, I would say st uh, agency, staff and agency, anyone out there, I'm going to give you the blunt, honest truth. <laughs> so he's going to be honest and transparent about our journey as a married tour couple and just working together, executing events as a tour team, how we met. And then also just give you guys with some tips and pointers that you can implement if you're dating a fellow EXP and you're looking to um, transition into working tours together as a tour couple, or if you're already a married tour team, because um, we have a lot of friends out there that are already uh, married tour teams actually executing events. So I'm pretty sure a lot of the things that we're going to talk about tonight um, are going to resonate with them, but there are also going to be some tips that you can also implement if you're thinking about uh, dating a fellow EXP, which can get a little crazy and hectic at times. But nonetheless, I'm gonna go ahead and stop running my mouth and let T just talk a little bit about his backstory, uh, how he began as an EXP, and then we'll talk more about how we met. Well, for myself, uh, hello everyone. My name is uh, Terio Davis. I go by T because a lot of times, some people, a lot of people mispronounce my name. So just keep it simple, T, T Davis. <laughs> Um, I started off in as a brand ambassador, which is the most important part of being in the experiential market industry. So you have a vibrant uh, attitude or personality and just love to interact with people. This is a great, great field to be in, just having that vibrant attitude. So you know anyone who has a vibrant attitude, encourage them to be in the experiential market industry because it'd be great for them. Again, I started off as a brand ambassador. And as a brand ambassador, uh, it's important that you convey the correct information that is given from uh, any, excuse me, any information that's given to you by uh, the staff and agency in, in reference to the product or things of that sort. And you just convey it in your own personality. So everyone's personality is different. And that's what makes uh, experience marketing great because one person can relate in a different way than myself. So the way I come off from bringing that energy and the way someone else come off bringing is two different things. But it's important to start off a brand ambassador, and I started off as a brand ambassador. I worked in law enforcement prior to me um, becoming a brand ambassador. And hold on, yes. how long ago did you start doing events? Like what Ooh. year? Honestly, but before I was in law enforcement, I was doing corporate jobs too as well. But I started off as a brand ambassador in college. Um, and from college, uh, it started with a COAT program, matter of fact. So shout out to COAT, the headquarters in Atlanta. So shout out to COAT, they gave me an opportunity. To, uh, to work as a brand ambassador. I don't even know what, what the staffing agency was at the time, but yeah, it was some young ladies. They said, hey, we need help uh, with giving out Coca-Cola. I'm gonna tell you some pointers about uh, Coca-Cola, and I want you to just talk to people and to give out samples of Coca-Cola. And they said, yeah, we'll pay you at the end cash. So right then there, I said, <laughs> okay, I'll do it. So I had the personality, they said, come on. So they had the personality. So I jumped in on it, and and she told me, yeah, you're gonna be our brand ambassador for the day. So I said, oh, so what does a brand ambassador exactly? Some things in the rope. So she told me, some um, ropes in and out as a brand ambassador, and boom, I started off. So I would say around 2004, around 2003, 2004, uh, I started off as a brand ambassador. So I've been in the game for a minute. <laughs> so 2003, 2004, I started off as a brand ambassador, and I was doing part-time while working a corporate job too as well. Then when I jumped in law enforcement, <clears throat> I was working in law enforcement, and still... You can do, uh, as a law enforcement officer, you can be doing side jobs, working like Braves games, different type of games. But I wanted to take off my uniform completely and not be dealing with law enforcement, have no badge on me. I just want to be T and not, um, and not, I want to be T, I want to be T Davis, not Officer Davis or any of that sort. So, uh, long hope be told, uh, be told that uh, while I was a law enforcement officer, again, I was still doing brand best work on the side too as well. So once I left uh, as a, um, at law enforcement, uh, I jumped back into uh, in the experiential marketing, which I really enjoyed. And um, I said, I'm going to start back doing tours because I was doing some tours 
But then while I was as a law enforcement officer, I was taking them days off, nothing right. But uh, <laughs> yes, I, I was doing side tours too as well, small tours. Um, so that's how I started off as a, uh, uh, as a, in the experiential market industry as a brand ambassador, which is the, the most important thing when you uh, work in the experiential market industry to, um, to learn is being a brand ambassador. And then for myself, I started in 2011. So I'll talk about this and you do what, give you guys a little backstory. Um, and Dominique, we're going to get to your question um, later on. So we're going to take questions at the end. So we'll go back through our feed um, and just answer all your questions. But hey, Michael. Hey, Simone. Um, hey to everybody joining us um, live. We're going to continue to just feed through and answer your questions. But as I was saying, I started back in 2009, fresh out of college. And I was just looking for a way to supplement income. And I um, was actually working an event. Me and Terry met at our first event. In 2011, we were working as brand ambassadors for LG. So I walk in to get ready for the event uh, because I was a little early. And I um, asked a gentleman where was the restroom because I wanted to make sure I was freshed up and had my uniforms ready to go. And when I came back upstairs, uh, we were at a place called the Tabernacle here in Atlanta executing an event. But when I came back upstairs to get ready for training, long and behold, the person that I had asked where the bathroom was, was T. And he was going to be working alongside me um, as a brand ambassador. So that was like pretty cool because I was like, oh, he was the bathroom guy and now we, we work in SBA. So that was the first introduction um, that we had to each other. And ever since then, like, you know, truth be told, he stuttered when he asked for my number. <laughs> and uh, ever since then, like, you know, it's just been a great mesh and a great relationship between us. You know, T was still working with Atlanta Police Department at the time. I was full time into the experiential marketing industry, hustling, working jobs as a BA, four to five jobs a day just to make it because I had quit my corporate job. So for us um, coming together and just working as BA still, but then, you know, developing a great relationship and seeing the potential to move into other avenues within the experiential market industry and working on tours was really, you know, something that we strive didn't initially strive to do but everything fell into place for us to make that happen yes and first um when we when we um <clears throat> as brand ambassador because of the, the industry is so small uh, i wasn't really interested um in, the, in a lot of the females in within the industry itself because uh, i i don't play where i work mm -hmm. so i kept that separate but then when i met jay it was something uniquely we was up there we was up there joking with each other and everything and I was like, all right, she, she's an intelligent young lady, first of all, and she seems like she knows what she's doing. Mm -hmm. So uh, I didn't really, I was hesitant on asking, like she say, I did, I did stutter a little bit, a little st st stuttering stand a little <laughs> bit. So I was stuttering a little bit uh, prior to me asking her. And it's Atlanta, so I was like, I know you dating somebody. I said, you fine. I know you dating somebody. <laughs> and she said, no, I'm single. Uh, I had to give her, uh, also I had to uh, get her number because I had to, uh, we had to turn in uniforms. And we had another event coming up um, for New Year's. And who was our manager? Vicky, but you oh, couldn't yeah. work. Oh, yeah. Vicky, Vicky was our manager. She she was funny as hell. But then, Vicky was our manager. She had something to drink, too. She was lit, boy. <laughs> uh, Vicky was our manager. And um, and she told me I had to get J, uh, J number because I had to turn in uniforms. So I had her number. And I said, and I just, just left a relationship probably like um, three months prior or two months prior. And... I said, I'm not looking for nothing serious. I just wanted to just go on a date. So I sent her a text message and I said, I know you are you dating someone? She said, no. And I was like, wow, she's not dating, she's not dating no one. So I was like, all right. So this potentially um, something I, I would look to a date that's within the industry. Mm -hmm. So things um, actually, oh, you had a phone call coming in, but things actually um, developed from there, as T said. We've been able to just um, develop a great relationship and now we met we met in 2011 things moved fast got married in 2013 um did our first tour actually together in 2012 we were not married yet yeah. but we were able to just transition into the experiential marketing industry and work events together and you know solidify ourselves as a tour management uh couple so yeah so but after we we started work we did again we did some work um, within the atlanta market together um brand ambassador work then we did like a little small couple small uh, programs where 
weekend programs where we went out of town for uh, automotive events. Mm -hmm. And we saw the camaraderie that we had. And I was like, all right, she could be somebody uh, mm -hmm. I would date in the industry, but also be someone possibly that um, I can go on to, we can go on tour together and, and, and be a team together. So uh, once she, we saw that camaraderie and, and, and everything, everything meshed together perfectly, it was like, all right, it's time. This can be my, this can be my partner right here on the road. So, mm -hmm. so, but before that, we did not, a lot of people ask, you know, did you both have your CDLs prior? No, um, we, T obtained his CDLA first. Yeah. And then after that, a year later, I went to school and got my CDL. Mm -hmm. And I will tell you this, having our CDLs now, even to this day, and that was back in 2013 yeah. I have, I have, and 2014. Well, I had my 20, 2011, to, beginning of 20, uh, late 2011, 2012. Yeah, that was one of the best decisions that we made to date working in this industry because it has allowed us to catapult ourselves and obtain just consistent opportunities as a CDLA tour team. So if you're still on the cusp and you're thinking about getting your CDLAs, go ahead and do it because it's, it's a great investment. Yeah, so uh, also um, as a CDLA uh, tour team, prior to getting, uh, we were saying that, we began managing tours. And our, and our first tour together was in 2000, 2012. This is without having our CDL. Our first tour together as management team, it was an automotive tour uh, from a, ma a major brand. And that tour actually, uh, we learned a lot from that tour at managing. Uh, one of the things that we first learned that you can't, you your your personal problems, you can't bring it to work, mm -hmm. especially being a, a couple. You can't bring, uh, bring it to work because prior to then, we saw where, uh, prior to us being a tour team, a tour team, we saw couples uh, come on scene and they'd be arguing as management team and as a brand ambassador, that's the last thing you want to hear. Um, your your tour uh, managers are up there arguing on some person that you didn't hear. For, you're not here for that. You here to bring some energy and, and to be a brand ambassador and to uh, to, to execute, execute it uh, in a very vibrant way and in a professional way. So the last thing you want to do is come on scene and boom, you you have two. Uh, you have two managers that can't work together, so that looks bad. So us seeing that, we saw how we have to convey ourselves. And um, one of the things that we did learn, to, again, to separate the two, and one is to communicate. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, one thing we have to learn, uh, how you have to learn how to do is communicate. So if you can communicate with someone in an honest way, I mean, honest, like um, outside, of the, um, when, you, when you're at, uh, away from the footprint and things is over, uh, after the event, you can go up like, hey, I didn't like how you did so and so, and that person don't take it personally. Just to, uh, <clears throat> they took it as a learning uh, experience instead of taking things personally. So some things I can say that I couldn't say to other uh, partners on my team. They're like, "Hey, Jay, you doing horrible at so and so. You need to step your game." Or up. T, or, you, you need know. to just calm down and chill because our roles. We're gonna talk about that in a second. But till T's, I'm more of the chill, calm one. T is more the zero to a hundred calm one. So. Learning how our personalities are different and being able to work through those on site, as T said, is important. Yeah. And um, just making sure that we, like he said, we um, don't bring our personal issues to work because mm -hmm. we've seen the re end result of that. And it also creates a rift within, you know, the group and within the brand ambassadors because the BA may not go speak to the female or the male because of what they saw or the, the interactions between you two. So keep your personal issues at home before you get on site, hash it out. Even if you're still mad at each other, hey, I'm mad at you, but we're here to work. Mm -hmm. We'll talk about our issues later. Like establishing that is important. And like he said, communication, like being able to effectively communicate in a way which doesn't... Um, like hurt each other's feelings or make each other feel how would you say like less than right yes but also also when you learn how to keep um, your personal problems away when you begin to work as a team and you and you execute an event you guys are moving on the event things are running well sometimes you even forget about the problems yeah so if you can able to navigate and, and learn that with each other uh, again a lot of your personal problems that you may have outside of work um, um, will basically diminish, and you you probably forget about the um the situation you had previously. So mm -hmm. that's that's a great about it. Once you learn that as a team, you guys can achieve anything as far as uh, manage the team together. So mm -hmm. that's one thing. 
when you learn once you learn how to communicate well it's communicate then also respect each other's authority so if jay is uh one i learned this too as well uh, we had an event it was um it was a concert a mm-hmm. concert tour, mm-hmm. and Jay, we, you had to have twenty. You had to be twenty one to get in. So the young lady, so she played us. She played us, but she got me, I guess. Mm-hmm. So Jay told informed her that she she wasn't allowed to come to the event because she she had to be twenty one. Mm-hmm. Yes, she was over twenty one, but you had to have ID and they had to scan. Mm-hmm. So so they like my speed. Uh, where's the other manager at? So I came up there and Jay was standing right there, and she was like. Uh, and other young lady, she already skinned out these. She was 21. They was together. And I was there with the other young lady when they skinned in. And I walked off. And I came back. And they was like, can you let me in? She's 21. Can you let me in? And uh, n- not really knowing that Jay already authorized that she could come in. So I was like, yeah, she come in. And, you know, looking at beauty. So <laughs> looking at beauty. I wasn't looking at booty. But I was looking at beauty. And I said, come on. I said, come on in. Come on. I said, she's all right. Come on in. <laughs> and they're right there. It's a no-no because... Jay already set and authorized standard. a standard say no, she cannot come in. And I was taking a liability because if anything should happen with uh, with her inside the event, um, and especially it was concert, it was alcohol, everything going, it, we would have been liable. So, boom, I learned right then and there. That cannot happen. Jay rolled her eyes at me, and I knew it was a problem. So, again, we didn't we didn't handle that situation right then and there. Uh, a, a discrepancy would happen. We waited after to the event. And she gave me the rundown, and she gave me the clear rundown of what I did wrong. So, again, that's a great tour team. She told me what I did wrong, and I didn't take it to heart. Mm-hmm. So you can't have your emotion and take it to heart. Oh, she's yelling at me and all this. All that. Yeah. No, she's trying to set perimeters where we both can cover each other and make sure that we're on point um, when running and managing the event. Because you have to remember, you're, you're representing the experiential marketing agency who hired you and the client because the client hired the agency who then hired you to execute the event. Mm -hmm. So you have to always make sure that both of you are working together as a team, whether you are a married team, a female-female team, a male-male team, you have to remember that you're there to work together and to, you know, make sure that your roles and responsibilities are clearly defined and that both of you are in clear communication and understand what is going to take place and transpire during an event. So as far as roles and responsibilities, how you know? How do we divvy up? You would say. Yeah. Our so, roles? so we we early. That's when the learning process. When you begin to work together uh, as a team, you kind of you you begin to figure out. All right, what's what's our strength and our weaknesses? All right. But both of us, we're strong. We're able to do it independently. But again, you're going to be stronger in one area than than your companion. She's going to be uh, or whoever your tour t- uh, partner is. One person going to be stronger in one uh, area, and one person going to be kind of weak. But overall, we can manage it independently though so but that's for us thing. the key yeah. was because we are two strong people learning how to not be so hands-on on everything and allow t or myself to lead an area so what would you say like okay our roles what is um, what do we so so for myself my role is to logistically uh, all the logistics as far as setting up the event itself the footprint uh, making sure that we are up on all codes certifications mm-hmm. um, anything of that sort I'm speaking with the on-site contact, um, let them know exactly what's going on, how the flow of traffic is going to um, be throughout the day, uh, throughout the event. Also, uh, what's, what's some other things? Um, uh, yeah, like? you do logistics footprint and you handle a lot of the on-site contact things. Anything from a issues with the trailers or trucks, you know, T is more hands-on with that. As for myself, I manage the brand ambassadors. I am the main point of contact usually when I'm working um, with the experiential marketing or the staff at agency, I am the one who trains all the brand ambassadors on site. T does add support, but I am the main um, person to train all the brand ambassadors. I handle breaks. I handle um, event recaps. I also work with the client, work as a client liaison. Usually when a client comes on site, I am the first main point of contact. And even for events um, and the on-site contacts for events, I work, you know, usually to communicate with them before an event and to schedule site checks. So over the years, we have found our flow mm-hmm. and found what we do best. And we t- we really try to stay within our areas and our niche to make sure that we successfully execute an event. It took time and trial and error to figure this out. It didn't happen overnight, but it happened pretty quickly for us um, because we understood, you know, we are working together as a team so once we 
grasp that concept and honed in on that, we were able to then decide, okay, well, I'm going to let you handle this because I know I'm not best at this. And, well, Jay, you go ahead and you, you do this because you're, mm -hmm. you're more hands-on. And for two strong people, to be honest, it was hard to really admit that just to take your hands off because we yeah. like to be hands-on with everything. And even sometimes... I'll come behind T and say, T, did you? He's like, Jay, I, I got it. I did it. And he, you know, so we still do that to this day. But I think over the years we have learned, you know, we trust each other as a mm -hmm. married couple, but trusting each other on the road and trusting that that person's going to get it done. You know, it has to, it has to um, translate. And, mm -hmm. and also when you're working and you're managing programs together. And also what's, what's great about it with our, our management a lot of times, people don't even know that we're a couple. Yeah. They think we're just a management team. Yeah. So uh, when they get on site and, and we were just speaking, I'm just doing what I'm supposed to do. Jay's doing what she's supposed to do as a manager. And a lot of times, they don't even know we, we're uh, a married couple. But they, they hint sometimes because we were, uh, I wear my, my band that has color on it. And then Jay probably have her band on. And we had uh, similar bands at the time. Yeah. And they would look down. They, but they wouldn't, a lot of Brandon Benson would yeah. question it. But someone would look down and be like, I know. Then at the end, at the end of the event, we always tell them, oh, um, "Yes, we are a married, a married couple like that, a married tour team." Then a lot of people, are like, "Oh, I thought it was. I knew it, but I wasn't. I yeah, wasn't sure." Yeah, that, and that's something that yeah. we. I mean, I feel like even if you are a married or a dating team, that's mm -hmm. something I don't believe needs to be publicized when you begin working an event to mm -hmm. any BAs. You're there to do your job to execute your event as a team. So what you do outside of work in your personal life shouldn't affect how you manage an event. And with that being said, we don't broadcast and just come on site and let people know that we're a married tour team. We prefer yeah. for you not to know. Yeah. Because sometimes when, as you guys know, when EXPs know this, they may try to go to one person or the other person to try to take longer breaks or to do certain things. So mm -hmm. we always keep it professional and make sure that we maintain, you know, a high level of, you know, event execution and professionalism when we're executing events. So... We don't we don't publicize that yeah. when we're executing events. Also, also what's great um, with the uh, experiential marketing, uh, with experiential marketing, there's a lot of beautiful people that work in the field. And the Bible say, all right, how about how do y'all handle people being jealous or being jealous or trying to talk to Jay or someone's trying to talk to me? I put work before anything, so a lot of times I'm not even being attentive to that. And um, again. Uh, with this industry, they don't know that we we are, are a a married team. a married tour team. So, funny story. This is gonna be R rated. Don't, hey, don't don't say that. So I'm gonna already. give y'all straight up. I'm gonna give you the straight up what happened. So we was on tour and we was at Virginia. Uh, we was in yeah, we was in Virginia. It was a music tour, and uh, matter of fact, it was Future performing too. So shout out to Future. But uh, um, we was there and the one of the production guys he was bringing a lift. He was bringing a lift because we need to uh, set up for our tent and everything, and the guy was uh, taking a lift by the truck then he saw Jay and he rolled over there and he rolled up to me hey he was like hey man hey man who fucking Jay and I was like um uh, well um well, I, said, I, I said I don't know I said her husband coming to town and it was so it was so shocked to me I was dying laughing I was like her husband uh her husband coming to town and see her uh, doing doing the breaks and everything but he like man I know somebody fucking Jay like that so long story long story told like at the end Jay, he was over there talking to Jay. Then uh, Jay ended up telling him, say, yeah, that's my husband over there, T, right there. He, uh, uh, that's my husband. He travels with me on tour. So the guy looked at me like, oh, he was like, oh, my God. He's like, bro, I'm sorry, man. He said, I'm sorry. I said, man, it is what it is. So I I'm blessed to know that I got a beautiful wife and everything. So I'm not a jealous type person. So you can't be jealous if you're in a, uh, if you're in a relationship and you're going on tour. You can't be jealous because... People are going to flirt. People want to do those things because yeah. that's natural. Yeah. So if you're not a jealous person, it's it's, it's, it's uh, it, it'll be great for you guys to be together again as a tour team, tour partner, and, and everything. So jealousy cannot be. Yeah. Uh, you cannot be jealous of anything, or and you have to have that trust too as well. So again, there's plenty of people who have tried to uh, sp uh, talk to Jay, but it is what it is. Yeah. But hey. That was one of the funniest story ever, boy. I was, hey, I was, I was crying laughing after that. He was, hey, he, he begged, He was so sorry for what he did. He was deeply sorry for um, what he said and everything. I was crying laughing, boy. Yeah. I was like, I wanted to tell him, yeah, who is fucking Jay? I'm fucking Jay. <laughs> so, excuse me, you guys. So, um, that's a little inside story that we had. That's one of the funniest things. I always remember that because that was the funniest thing ever. 
uh, being on tour. So that's a good memory uh, that we had together uh, also. Um, but we've been able to accomplish uh, so much as a tour team. Um, we've just been a part of some amazing launches of programs, um, tours, events, um, and just been able to experience travel together. We traveled to 49 states. We traveled out of the country. So we've been blessed to have been able to uh, be a part of some amazing programs and events, which has afforded us the opportunity to experience life together. So, mm -hmm. you know, it's been a great, uh, great journey for us. And we mm -hmm. constantly learning and constantly evolving like as people, because you have to understand when you're married, a lot of times you have to, um, you look at people just commenting on what you said the next show. It is, this is hilarious. But back to what I was saying, you have to learn how to separate work from personal life. Yeah. And that's something that I always talk about. It's something that we struggle with all the time because, you know, we are on tour executing events. And when we go to dinner, we still talking about work. So making sure that we bring in a date night, that we constantly make time for each other. Um, and that we are spending time doing things outside of work, you know, spontaneous things, just checking out different sites in different areas, so, you know, is important, you know, mm -hmm. to us. So that's one thing, being on tour that's, was great because we're both uh, sports enthusiasts. So mm -hmm. you know, anytime where we're in the market, we always try to go to, um, so we're knocking out right now, we're knocking out all the, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, all the, all the um, baseball stadiums. So we knocked out pretty much. I say we got about 16 13 more. and 13 more to go. So as a tour team, that's some things you can you can have goals on the tour. Like you want to check out certain sites that America have. Mm -hmm. And when you're on tour, mm -hmm. you get to see uh, all layouts in the land and how beautiful it is. Mm -hmm. um, and also meet so many people, go to uh, different type of events. Um, it's opened up so many doors for us. So it, it's been a blessing on that part too as well. So um, And also, uh, because we toured the U.S. so much, then you you naturally want to gravitate outside the borders. So yeah. uh, basically, we've been over uh, twenty seven countries now, yeah. and planning on knock out before we had kids. We're trying to knock out at least I would say at least five more. Yeah, five more countries we're gonna try to knock out um, before we decide uh, start the family and everything. So uh, that's one thing you 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 begin to gravitate outside the U S. And when you gravitate outside the U S., even more doors open up because they find out what you do and. They, they want you to be part of what they have going on overseas. So we even now have developed uh, friends overseas. Got a couple friends in Singapore um, that we met over there too as well. Singapore, we have other friends in oh, Germany. We have friends in Germany now. Italy. Uh, Italy. So we have friends in Italy now. So again, you expand your horizon um, uh, outside the U.S. So that's been a blessing for us too as well. Mm -hmm. Um, but we will, we're always honest and transparent with any tour couple that we work with and tell them, you know, it's not easy. You know, people look at us from the outside looking in and just like, man, y'all have this cool job. Y'all work together. Mm -hmm. But people don't understand the backstory and what it takes for us to be able to execute events and just work and, and build this camaraderie. And we meet so many people when we're executing events that ask, how can you work with your mate? Like... I, I need a break every day. I don't see how you do it. So, you know, for us, it has become um, very easy and uh, very uh, fluid for us to just be around each other, you know, 24-7 all the time. Um, but if you're if you're a person that likes your alone time and you like to, you know, explore and do things on your own, you can still do that while you're in a, uh, while you're touring and executing events. But... It's, it's going to be tough because you're around this person 24-7, 365. 365, literally 365. So, yeah, so, so naturally you're going to need your space and you're going to want to be able just to do some things on your own. So, like, what do you do? Like, I, what do you do on the road? I know what you do, but you could tell them, like, to get away from, from, from me for, like, a couple of hours. Well, so I, I always go to the gym and work out a couple of hours to allow me... Uh, just to get some free time to myself. Uh, sometimes I go and read, and also I'm always looking to explore other options outside the experiential market industry, open up other doors um, with uh, some clients too as well. Not not even uh, within experiential marketing, even in the music industry too as well. So I'm, I'm always seeking to broaden our horizon with everybody because Atlanta's big with a lot of, I'm, 
I'm from um, from the Atlanta area, so Atlanta has become big with the music industry, with the movie industry. So I'm always seeking to broaden our uh, our capabilities of um, working within the experimental market industry to other avenues. So that's what I do in my off time. Like again, I say I work out, just keep a level head. And I always focus on another uh, adventure that we can take on as a team. Mm -hmm. And for me, like I like to read a lot, um, like to check out things in the city. Sometimes just go by myself. Write and books. Just do things. Write books. Yes, I love writing. Um, <laughs> and I also uh, like to watch HGTV and just spend time, you know, doing things uh, outside of just work and event recaps and responding to emails. So. That's how I decompress and just spending time with family too. Family is extremely important to us. Um, so that's, you know, when we're on the road, we try to make a long time, a long time and just time to do things outside of, of work. So. Yes. And also uh, for you guys who are, who are uh, within the industry uh, and you and you just say you are a tour manager right now and you're trying to step to the next level being uh, getting your CDLs like Jay spoke early, getting your CDLs open up again, another door avenue. Um, for you, so a lot of times you may be off um, on on a, on a tour, and you and you're just taking a break, and you get emails um, <laughs> emails are asking, hey, can you make a run to so and so? I have an event in New York. Can you make a run? Can you pick up this this uh, these these assets and just take it to New York, and make a quick run, make a quick good book, yeah. especially if it's a rush delivery, rush delivery, and you better damn tax them. But uh, <laughs> rush delivery, you uh, just uh, take them up. Take it up there. You get to enjoy the event uh, quick and easy. So it always adds extra income too as well, uh, having your CDLAs. Mm -hmm. So again, Jay has her CDLAs. I have my CDLAs. And again, it opens us even more broader avenues too as well. So um, so we, we are we are skilled in many, in many ways too, not just with the automotive industry, not with just... Um, not with just um, what, what other tobacco, to the, or, tobacco or different sampling programs. We alcohol, touch every every facet of the every, industry, and we we're very dynamic in the fact that we know and understand, you know, and can pinpoint things before they happen. And we're able to just give each other that look and say, okay, we need to make that adjustment. And that took time and took years for us to develop that. Mm -hmm. So if you find the right to a partner, like I said, it doesn't have to be someone you're dating. But if you find the right to a partner or if you're deciding or contemplating whether to go on tour with somebody, you know, make sure you vet that person. Make sure you kind of know a little bit about them before you get on tour mm -hmm. um, because you're going to be spending a lot of time with this person. So making sure that both of you um, are in sync and can work as a team to get things done and to execute a successful event is key and important to any any type of activation. Yes, and also uh, beneficial as a couple too as well. Um, a lot of agencies um, also gravitate towards you because it, it saves too as well. So uh, also, if you wanted to increase financially for as your hotel per diem, uh, having a tour partner that you can share a room with mm -hmm. uh, also helps financially for you guys. For both so, of you. For both of you. So make sure that you can stay in that room with uh, with that person. So if they are nasty or you can't handle them snoring I, i've been in the room with someone this before i met jay i went on tour I, well, it was just a, luckily it was just a weekend but uh, we shared a room i shared a room with a gentleman snore and snore and snore i wanted to i wanted to get up in the middle of the night and just slap the hell out of him with a pillow but i kept my composure but those are some of the things that you want to um, um be cohesive about just making sure that you're aware that this person that I can share a room with, they don't have any type of bad habits. There's some drug heads out there too in the, um, within the H-Mitch market. Just make sure they're not a drug head, they're not abusing drugs. Or, or they're or, not compromising your mm -hmm. ability to execute the event and it costs both of you a job opportunity. Exactly. So you just gotta be mindful of that. Be mindful of the people that you're working with. Um, be mindful of the people that you are referring mm -hmm. for a tour and to work. A tour because at the end of the day, all you have in this industry is your name, your reputation, and your ability to be professional and to execute an event. So, you want to answer some questions? Go ahead, right. T. And then, then also, when I said, when Jay said being professional and bringing quality, so with anything with your partner, make sure you guys bring quality because quality uh, overlasts quantity. And, and what's great about that, when I mean by quality, uh, that it opened up doors to that we don't have to right now really go out and push our resume to agencies 
a lot of times right now, agencies come to us. Yeah. So it's been a blessing uh, to just, again, to have quality work. And when you're out there in the field, you're doing quality. You, you're training brand ambassadors correctly. You execute the event to its highest potential. And, with and you that, respond with their event recaps on time in recaps, a timely manner. The photos. You make the account manager's mm -hmm. job easy. And that's mm -hmm. the key thing is to make that account manager or that staff and coordinator's job easy. And sometimes, and sometimes as a tour team, honest, we're doing the account manager's job anyway. Yeah. So we're doing that job. So if you have an account manager who respects uh, the quality that you bring, th th they even look out for you on the road with yeah. extra bonuses too as well. Yeah. So that's great. Account manager that, that respects you as a, a bringing quality, they will also look out for you. And so take that's care not, of you. And take care of you as well. So and, like I, and again, like we say, you bring, you bring that quality work uh, within the industry as, as a team a as a team you don't have to worry about worrying about the next tour because right now tours honestly for the, find you. right tours now we have we have i say like uh, a couple tours right now looking at us asking for us our work for 2019 so it, it opened up doors where we don't have to come and go and look mm -hmm. but dominique asked the question um any tips on going full-time or booking tours uh, I would say first, if you are keen and open to getting your CDL, definitely grab your CDL. But if you're not there yet and you're not ready to get your CDL, then I would say making sure that you have a resume which um, shows your management experience, making sure that you have a video, um, an interview, not an interview per se, but just a video which highlights you know, all of the experience that you have obtained over the years as an EXP. And you have to be able to sell yourself and sell all of your qualities and your experience. Um, I would say continue applying. I didn't receive my first management program when I applied for my first, second, third, tenth program. It wasn't until maybe 15 or 20 programs down the line and a year, almost a year and a half later that I received my first tour opportunity. So keep applying. Make sure you have a resume that's tailored to your management experience. And if you are willing to getting your cdl will assist you and also if you if you're looking to become on on the tour side as well do a great job as a brand ambassador because honestly jay and i we always look out for brand ambassadors brand ambassadors that work with us we see that like man that person is good mm -hmm. they know what they're doing or a team lead within it just say we're going uh, we come in the market and there's a team lead who's managing the team uh, in a great fashion we always keep we always just have their name and that phone number and we'll reach out to them if it's a program where they need a tour or partner and we just we refer them in, in that manner so always do a great job as far as being a brand ambassador and in and, and any role that you should take mm -hmm. even as a product specialist yeah. I've been given other opportunities just being a great brand ambassador and I don't even tell people that I work full-time as a tour manager I just I, I'm just here to be a brand ambassador mm -hmm. and so a lot of times I come back in the market in Atlanta market and I, I just work as a brand ambassador just to see how the flow of the, being a EXPs. brand ambassador, the EXPs, I may be able to refer somebody on the program that's been offered for me as a tour, and they need I need other tour staff with me too as well. So I know that person that person can bring great quality work. Mm -hmm. I always refer them to be part of the program that we're running to as well. So uh, that's one thing. Always be a great brand ambassador because that's the forefront uh, of any event, and if you can convey. Uh, information to the consumer and, and have that Smile. consumer giving a, a great giving that great energy the great interaction at least to that and then, again at least like, many doors to be open to as well mm -hmm. so don't give up Dominique um, it took time for me it took time for T to get where he's at but you have to continue to apply and the doors will open and opportunities will be presented to you but make sure you're networking with the right people when you're on site you are maintaining my three P's professionalism presentable and personable while you're on site and just make sure that you are always you know updating your resume and submitting for those opportunities because something is going to come up and you will be given that opportunity but it, it takes time yeah and you'll be ready that's the great thing by starting out as a ba you'll be equipped and ready and you'll appreciate the opportunity even more and what so. i what i've loved about what jay not as my wife but also what she has done for the industry what she's doing for the industry is bringing uh, stability to the industry and education those who are trying to be in the industry and those who are already within the experiential marketing industry. And with this book, you do what? You guys, you guys right now, you guys right now need to go on 
uh, Amazon and purchase, put in, you do what in the search, and this book is gonna come up. Purchase this book. This book will give you intel and insight on, on exactly what you need to start as a brand investor, how to conduct yourself in, um, in all avenues and everything that you need. So again, you guys mm -hmm. watching or who may be watching later, make sure you go on here and purchase your copy of You Do What. And I'm gonna, uh, later, um, in a few minutes, I'm gonna give you a little insight on um, ways to make some, some more money within the industry, just reading this book. But uh, Simone asked the question, have you ever had to collectively dismiss a BA on a program? What was your biggest fear, if any, during your first tour? Uh, so, uh, okay, we're going to keep it short because we've been on for about 40-something minutes. But quick story. First tour we did together, we had dismissed a BA. So you're getting a double win in the first one. A product specialist. A product specialist. A tour. We, were, tour we were managing a tour for an automotive brand. We won't say who. But long story short, this product specialist uh, was giving keys to a vehicle which was very fast. And we had told the BA, I mean, the product specialist assigned to that vehicle to not give him the keys because we saw at training he was extremely irresponsible. But that product specialist ended up giving that person the keys to this vehicle. Mm -hmm. Me and T, we had an event the next day. And we had an event two day, the day after, so two days. Three o'clock in the morning, we, uh, well, before that, we had all the, we called all the product specialists, made sure that they had their keys um, and that they were back. And we looked outside and we checked in with everybody. Everybody was back and they were at their hotel, hotel and ready to go set up for the next day. Three o'clock in the morning, we get a call to our hotel room from the sheriff county, the sheriff's uh, department of this particular county we were in. And they told us that one of our vehicles had been involved in an accident. And I was on the phone, I was like, officer, that's not true because I did a check and all of our vehicles were out there. Well, T was speaking to the officer, I got up, looked outside, and sure enough, that vehicle was missing. So that product specialist took the vehicle, he gave the other product specialist who we told not to give the vehicle, he gave him the vehicle. That product specialist took the vehicle, totaled the vehicle, was involved in a DUI accident, and fleed the scene of an accident. He fled the scene. He fled the scene, and uh, the vehicle, well, I'm not going to say what brand, those were some good vehicles. He had to be running uh, at least 100 or something down the, down the roadway. It flipped. Several times, all the airbags were deployed. deployed. The car looked like a, a straight sardine. Honestly, I, you would think that he he would have died from the accident, but mm -hmm. luckily he was able to walk away. And long story short, he came back the next day. So morning. we were looking for him. We were calling him. We had to let the agency know. You know, this is the first thing we did was call the agency. Let him know, let them know that he was missing. We kept trying to call him. Kept trying to call him. The hotel. Uh, manager let him let us into his room. He had alcohol everywhere in the room, so he bottles, had been drinking bottles and bottles every, all night. So we were having a team meeting at around one or two o'clock. The agency was notified. Of course, he was going to be terminated. One o'clock in the daytime, he comes walking into the hotel like everything was fine. Like, hey guys, like what's up? And we like, didn't you? Don't you? Do you not know the severity of what just happened? So busted lip, ble blood, uh, blood, old blood that was dried up, shirt all described. He just looked a hot mess. And, and we could tell he had been in something. So we had at that point, we, we pulled him to the side. Of course, we let him know he was dismissed from the program. And, you know, we had to d be, you know, forego having him, of course, on the tour. And we had to dis dismiss the person who gave him the keys to the car because you by doing that, you have made yourself liable and you are now responsible for what transpired. So we had to get rid of two product specialists that day. Yeah, on tour. On tour and have a new car shipped in to our event because we lost, we were down one vehicle. So that was our first tour and, and that was a crazy and, uh, experience. And also as a manager too as well, once you see, I guess, um, especially during training, be aware of your product specialists. Like doing training, right. if you your, see somebody, your EXPs. Um, your EXPs, you may see that they may be out of control. Convey it to the uh, to the uh, <clears throat> to the agency. We conveyed it before we left with it uh, with the tour. We with conveyed it to them managers. with the account manager. We sat down with them. We emailed them too as well. Put things in email and writing yeah. too as well. So we put it in writing. We informed them, hey, this is just gentleman right here. He may be out of control and he may not be the best. Uh, for, this fit for this program we informed them with 
two with two emails thoroughly explaining why. They but said, they, but they, they said, "Oh, cry! Oh, he's all right. He's just he just he just like that. No, he's just not like that. He's just about flipping cars over. That's yeah. what he's about. That's yeah. what and that's and about. that's what happens. So you know, if you have a hint about something and you don't feel good about a person or an event, make sure you communicate that information because you never know how that may play out and transpire and um affect the overall event so make sure you're always effectively communicating with your account managers with the staffing coordinators and relaying your concerns to them you know that's that's one thing that we learned early on communication as a tour manager with each other and with the office is is important so yes. so that i mean we're gonna probably go ahead and get off of here um, oh, Dominique, another question. Is it better to go through BA agencies for tours or directly through marketing agencies? Both. Both. Um, it depends on where you're starting. If you're uh, new in the industry, I would definitely um, try your hand at both. But you may get booked quicker with staffing agencies because yes. a lot of times they have tours either last minute or they are... Um, what would you say? Uh, well, well, it gives you a quicker opportunity to get within and on the, the tour side. Your foot in. So if if you can have, get the opportunity with a, a staffing agency, go ahead and and and, and be <clears throat> be open to that too as well. Yeah, my first tour was with a staffing agency, Attack Marketing. They booked me for my first tour, and then after that, you know, it grew and grew, and the client loved us so much that he wanted us on future programs. So we were able to build a rapport with them, and you know, work with directly with the experiential market agency so it can work both ways but i say better is with directly with a marketing agency so yeah. uh, right now all of all of our tours are directly with a marketing agency mm -hmm. so yes the better option is the marketing agency but if you're trying to get your foot in the door on your first tour if the opportunity opens up on the staff agencies on the staff agency side Go ahead and, and jump on that opportunity. Then again, that door will open up. Where and, and just learn, that, learn, mm -hmm. and then from there you'll be able to sell yourself for future tour opportunities. So, yeah. so that's key. Um, but any last words before we go? Um, <laughs> any more questions out there? But um, last word. Also, I want to convey this too as well. So it may be some of you guys that's in, that are already in the industry. They're like, oh, I don't need to uh, read you to what, but. I've met some people in, in the industry who started out where, where we were together as a brand ambassador now to tour managers and also they're struggling within the industry and, and a lot of them say financially they're struggling. Well, in Jay's book, <laughs> You Do What, again, go to Amazon on, uh, go to Amazon and purchase your copy, You Do What. In chapter 10 right there, chapter 10, that right there refers to smart money management. Mm -hmm. Up on the smart money on the management, it teaches you ways and ropes to <laughs> it teaches you ways and ropes to financially save your money and, the and, budget. How, and how to budget your money during the all season and within the industry. And within the industry, it's okay to splurge on certain things, but you got to remember you can't splurge all the time because again, the money's not going to be Especially there. Especially on tour, when on you, tour, yeah. on tour when you're getting financially uh, lump sum of, of of money at one time. You have to learn how to budget your money. If you don't know how to budget your money and you've been in the industry over five years on tour you and, and you and you financially broke, purchase your copy of You Do What on <laughs> Amazon. Go to Amazon and buy your copy of You Do What and turn to page chapter 10. Smart Money Management. It would teach you the ropes and ways to save your money yeah, and also important. to invest. Mm -hmm. Also, uh, with You Do What, um, it opened up um, with Jay what she wrote in there. It opened up shows you how you open up avenues to explore other dreams and goals that you may have. We never. I, I thought about doing real estate, not going heavily, but within the last uh, two years, we were going heavily uh, within um, the uh, real estate investment. We were like, blessed to uh, to to have a couple properties up on our belt now, and we're looking to explore uh, a couple more too as well before we uh, leave out the industry. So. That's one thing. Whatever you have dreams and goals, you may be want to open up a, a, business. A, a business. This is a way where you can fund that and also work towards it too as well. So right now, I'm going to show you right now. That's what we're wearing right now. I'm not nine to five. So I'm not nine to five. If you read this book, you do what? You will understand the reason why we have I'm not nine to five. Yeah. And again, that's why that's, that, that's a good reason. Again, that's a good reason to purchase you do what? Because it teaches the ropes. Uh, within the industry that you may not know of. And I'm going to let the secret out the bag. When the book 
tour life come out, <laughs> oh, it's gonna give you some more insight too as well. But this is the this is the the ground breaking of to start you off within the experiential marketing and it sets you up for success. So when you decide after you read you do what, then you read you do what. I think it's tour life. When you read that, it, it teaches the ropes while you've been on tour, so you can gain financially. Once you begin gain financially. You can start throwing, oh, all right, I just said I wanted to buy me a home uh, within the next two years or within the you next year. You can accomplish your goals. You can accomplish that too as well. Mm-hmm. Um, also, if you say, all right, I wanted to open up me a, 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 a bakery or a catering shop. Oh, all right, I'll do that too as well. So you may... And working on tour and being able yeah. to get that, you know, um, financially set yourself up to be able to accomplish your goals is important. So... Save your money, financially set yourself up, pay off your debt, use your opportunities as a tour team to financially put yourself in a better situation. Because, yeah. you know, why else would you be doing it just to blow money? No, that's not the end all be all. You know, we all should be a sh- striving towards things. I know you like, you may enjoy working in this industry and you want to mm-hmm. make it a career. Yes, but you got to also have a side, a SH, a side hustle and maybe an exit plan if that's something that mm-hmm. you want to do. So yeah. so keeping that, you know, in the in your mind and keeping staying focused on your goals. We do vision boards every year. Um, that's important. Yeah. So, 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 so to all my uh, EXPs who start in the industry and those, especially those who've been a veteran with the industry, they think they know it all and they don't. Sometimes I sit back. I'm more so I sit back and I just listen to them. Sometimes they say some real things financially that's not smart. And again, you do what? <laughs> so go to Amazon and purchase your copy and learn. So there are cer- certain things that you may already know, like, oh, I know that. I don't need that. And there's some things that are going to open your eyes up that, that you probably didn't even know about mm-hmm. and that you can be, uh, again, more financially sound so you can uh, invest into those dreams and goals too as well. So that's why we say... I'm not nine to five. And shout out to, and, and, and it's great. And what's great about uh, what's great about this industry too as well. So you, for our shirts that are, uh, the, the print, uh, who printed these are who? Stephanie. So shout out to Stephanie. Stephanie is someone I met as a brand ambassador. We work together in the Atlanta area. So she's a brand ambassador. She started her own printing company here in the Atlanta uh, area. It's called Two... Two Gink. Two shout Gink. Shout out to Two Gink. So shout out to Two Gink. They started their printing company. And she was able to print out, print shirts. out shirts. I'm not nine to five. So that's a great thing. So shout a great out to example Stephanie. of somebody just doing their own thing and finding their own way within, um, within the industry. Our so. t- and then I'm going to give another in- insight. Our tax accountant, uh, she's uh, within industry. She worked with us. Mm-hmm. She worked with Jay on tour too as well. So she's um, she's the also, she also worked in within the industry. And again, it opened up many avenues and networking with other people too as well. So... Mm-hmm. Um, I'm going to be quiet and I'm going <laughs> to get you guys back to Jay because I know you guys want to hear Jay talk rather than No, two. no. But we're just going to go ahead and get off of this live video because it's going on an hour now. Thank you guys for tuning in, um, for just hearing and learning all of our insight, giving you guys the, as T said, the raw, unedited, you know, versions of the things that we go through, the challenges that we face as a tour team. If you're thinking about it, if you're contemplating it, make sure you get the right tour partner. You are only as good as the person working next to you. Yep. Um, but I hope we have been able to inspire you guys, give you guys some little nuggets you could take away and implement on your tours. And nonetheless, we're going to go ahead and get off of here. Hopefully, I can get T back on another time. Uh, but other than that, you guys, enjoy your weekend. I'm going to be posting uh, the EXP on the go for tomorrow. Make sure you guys continue to have people join our community. We are only as good as the community in the group. And we are only as good when we share information. So continue to feed off each other, um, share this group with others, and we are going to continue to make improvements. And shout out to Jay for bringing positive insight within the industry. So uh, that's one thing about it. She she wanted to make the group uh, uh, EXP, the EXP Elite group. She wanted to be positive because uh, there are a lot of negative people in this industry. I'm gonna be straight up. There's a lot of negative industry. I'm not gonna point them out, but I will point them out because that's what type of person I am. But no, I'm not. going to keep. I'm going to keep quiet. Again, I'm a quiet person. I'm not even on old social media. But anyways, there are a lot of people who are negative out there, and she just wanted to make this this group be a positive reflection of what experiential marketing can do for clients and also for those who work within the industry. So 
Um, shout out to all my clients. I know this is the first time. They're like, T is actually on here. So shout out to all my clients out there. T is finally on social media. So I'll let you guys take it to Jay. And thank you for being part of the Expansion Marketing Industry. I love you. Okay. And I'm out. Bye.